الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون الله سبحانه وتعالى in this surah surah al-Rum the Roman <coughs> says that it is among his signs God's signs that he has created partners for you from among yourselves meaning they are humans like you لتسكنوا إليها so you may seek tranquility with them that's number one number two وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And he, meaning Allah, Allah, <coughs> puts between you mawaddah, love, and rahma, mercy. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And the, in, in these are signs for those who reflect. <coughs> Marriage is the most sacred institution in Islam, my dear brothers and sisters. And that's why there are many verses in the Quran, as well as hadith by the Holy Prophet and his Holy Prophet family, emphasizing the role of family. And I'm going to go in detail about that. <clears throat> the most important institution in our society is not the Pentagon, it is not NASA, it is not the White House, it is not any observatory, it is the family. Because once you build a good family, it means that you're able to build a good community, a good society. And if we fail in building a good family, we fail in building a good society. Most inmates, by the way, the United States has the largest number of inmates in the world. The largest. 2.7 million inmates. The largest, by far the largest in the world. Most inmates, this is what statistics say, most inmates come from what they call, psychologists and sociologists call, broken homes. Broken homes. Where the inmate never had a chance to live a normal life with his parents or her parents. They never had. There was divorce, there was separation, there were violence, there was domestic violence. There was, there was in the family, and this is the byproduct. The byproduct of such marriage and such families is that it produces a criminal. Don't only blame the criminals for what they do, my dear brothers and sisters. It is unfair. We need to blame the society and the criminal. It is the society that produces criminals. One 
sociologist says, if you give me five kids, I can make a doctor out of one, an engineer out of the second, a teacher out of the third, and a businessman out of the fourth, and a thief out of the fifth. It is the society. It is the society that pushes someone to be a criminal or a researcher at a lab. That's why Islam emphasizes the role of, uh, of the family. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, Julusu al-mar'i ma'a ahlih khayrun min julusihi fi masjidi hadha. It is better for a man to sit with his wife and kids than to sit in my holy masjid in Medina. You know, the masjid of the Prophet in Medina is the second holiest masjid in Islam. We all know that. Every prayer you pray at the masjid of the Prophet in Medina is multiplied how many times? 10,000 times. 10,000 times. The Prophet says, for a man to sit with his family and chat with them and spend some quality time with his family, he will be rewarded more than if he spent some time in my masjid praying and worshiping God. This shows that this institution is so important, so significant in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The institution of marriage, the family. What have we achieved in the West? Well, we have been able to build this great civilization. We have been able to produce vehicles, airplanes, huge skyscrapers, uh, internet, buildings, bridges, you name it. We have been able to raise family income and live a comfortable life. That's all true. Yes, we also have been able to offer the best medicine in the world, the me best medical care and health care in the world. That's also true. But what is true also is the family in this country in general and in the West has been deteriorating. A house, a house, a family house has become nothing short of a hotel. You know, in the hotel, when you go to the hotel, you check in, you get your room, you go to your, you do your business, your usual dis business. At night, you go to your room and sleep. You don't even know who your neighbor is. The next door room, you don't know them. All those uh, guests share this hotel at night to sleep. Then in the morning, they all disperse. They go after their business without talking to each other. Isn't that what the family now is in this country? A man leaves in the morning, comes in the evening, so fatigued, so hungry. He needs to eat. After eating, he wants to watch his favorite sport, his hockey game. And then he goes to sleep. A wife would rise up in the morning, she goes to the, she drops the kids to school, and then she goes to work. She comes back in the afternoon, fatigued and tired. She wants to eat a few bites, then she goes to sleep. They hardly have the time to talk to each other. They hardly have the time to talk to the kids. They hardly have the time to communicate. And even when they sit on the dining table, Nowadays, they are busy with their iPhones, checking their text messages, their WhatsApp, their Facebook. There is silent communication between them. 
It's a house. It looks like a house, but in reality, it is nothing more than a hotel that they share physically, but they are separated mentally. There is mental segregation. Islam says that's not how family should be. You need to spend quality time with your spouse, with your children every single day. Children in this country spend more time with their peers at school than with their own parents. A husband spends more time these days in this country with his female colleague at work than with his own wife. A wife spends more time with her, female, with her male colleague at work than her own husband. So, do you tell me this is a family? Or it is guests at a hotel? We have really turned into guests in, in a hotel. Islam says you need to not miss that point. No matter how wealthy, how educated, how advanced you become, you should not lose sight. Family is family. It is your rock. And it has to stay that way. And you should not lose sight about it. So, what does Islam suggest here? Islam says marriage has four objectives. And please listen to that carefully. Allah says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا He has created partners for you. The first objective, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So you may seek tranquility with them. This means that marriage, a good marriage, a good marriage, a functional marriage, is a tranquility. It is a tranquility for both, for the husband and for the wife. You feel serene. You're supposed to come home tired from everything outside, to basically relax. You come home to relax. You come home to enjoy your family, to enjoy the meal, to enjoy the peace, to talk to your spouse and discuss various issues, to vent out, to share ideas and share thoughts and dreams. Isn't that what tranquility is? To have a soulmate who shares your ideas and your dreams and pain to have someone you can confide in. I have mentioned this before. One, one of the most essential human needs, my dear brothers and sisters, we are social beings. We need someone to confine to in. We need someone to talk to. We need someone to vent out to. This is a very important factor. In psychological therapy and psychiatric therapy in this country, the first they think they do in their therapy, they provide patients with a, an outlet for them to speak, to let it out, to confine in someone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created your partner. So the first thing you do, you confide in her and she confides in you. You share with her your dreams and your ideas and your ambitions. That's a very lofty, lofty object, objective. To have someone with you to share your ideas and your dreams and your pain and your aspiration. This is a big, big objective to have someone who shares the same ideas, same plans, same vision. This is not something that can happen easily. So the first objective of building a family and marriage is to uh, to seek tranquility. 
physical tranquility and mental tranquility. Mental tranquility. And everything is being put for sale now online. You can shop online today. Anything from, you know, your underwear to an airplane probably. But tell me, where can you shop for tranquility? Do you know any chain store that can sell tranquility where you can go and buy tranquility from? Do you know any place that tells you, okay, pay me $2,000 and we will give you two doses of tranquility? No. Tranquility cannot be achieved through any transaction. It can happen only if you manage to build a good family and having successful marriage. That's the only way you can achieve tranquility. People, people who have achieved an empire of wealth, they may fail in achieving tranquility. Because those are two different things. You read about Jeff Bezos recently. The most wealthiest person, I guess, or the second wealthiest person, I'm not sure. $111 billion. $111 billion. Yes, he was able to achieve this empire, but he was not able to achieve tranquility at home that after 25 years of marriage he had to divorce and each one would go in their way on their own way so having this objective is not something that could be achieved easily my dear brothers and sisters islam emphasizes this point litaskunu ilayha so you may seek tranquility with them. And the only place you can find tranquility is at home. Not at the office, work office. At home. Not at the market. Not at Wall Street. Not anywhere you can find tranquility. The only place you can find a tranquility is if you have a functional family. You come home, you forget about everything beyond the house. You leave all your stresses out and you come home and you enjoy the tranquility, the peace. So, the happiness. And that is the first objective, my dear brothers and sisters. The second one is offering some type of immunity. Immunity from falling in immoral pit. Meaning marriage, getting married would help both men and women to be satisfied physically and absorb their energy through the right channel. And instead of seeking other avenues such as pornography, such as prostitution or other ways. The best way to protect oneself is through marriage from falling in those immoralities by getting married. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, Rak'atan yusallihima mutazawwij khayrun min sab'ina rak'a yusalliha azab. Two rak'a, two rak'a, two, a unit of two rak'a, prayer unit of two rak'a, has more award. Two rak'a of prayer performed by a married man or a married woman has more reward than 70 rak'a, 70 rak'a of prayer performed by a single man or a single woman why is that because a married man 
for a married woman are focused on their life, focused on their relationship. But a man who is not married, he's single, he's all over. He's all over. He does not belong until he gets married. Yes, he prays that there is no stability, there is no focus. So Allah says that marriage would bring some relative immunity from falling in those immoral diseases that I mentioned. Number three, listen to this, my dear brothers and sisters. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً the basis for any marital relationship has to be mawadda and rahma, love and mercy. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we see in some materialistic based society, families are not based on rahma and mawadda, on mercy and love, rather on interest, interest. That's why the minute there is a dispute, they run into a divorce lawyer, and then they start discussing what is yours and what is mine. 50-50. And they fight over the 50-50. And if they could not settle it peacefully, then they resort to her, to the court. And they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on lawyers. Hundreds of thousands of lawyers. Uh, of, of lawyers make living out of people's disputes, marital disputes in this country. That's why I always tell couples who, who are experiencing some difficulties, before going to the lawyer, Try to seek reconciliation. Go to an imam, a sheikh, an elderly person, a wise person, and seek some kind of counseling. Because once you go to the lawyer, halas, they will keep milking you up. And they will encourage you to seek divorce. And they will tell you, come on, I will help you with this. And two lawyers are making big money out of those two couples. Those people are suffering and those lawyers are making money. So, in Islam, in our religion, a family is not based on a transaction, on interest. It shouldn't be that way. A husband and a wife are one unit. They shouldn't talk about your property, my property. They shouldn't talk when we get divorced, who will take what? Why you even talk about divorce? The Prophet says, The most hated, permissible act in the eyes of God is divorce. It is permissible, but it is hated by God. God hates divorce. وَإِذَا طَلَّقَ الْمُؤْمِنَانِ اهْتَزَّ عَرْشُ اللَّهِ When two young couple get divorced over silly issues, then the, they would cause the throne of God to shake. The throne of God would shake. So, a family should be based on love and mercy, and mahabba, and mawadda, and affection, and not all about my money, my interest. If there is no love in the family, I assure you there will be no love in the society. I ask you this simple question, my dear brothers and sisters. Have you asked yourself this question before? why we have so much violence in this country why once in a while we find a young man a madman 
taking his rifle and shooting students in, uh, in the public schools, high school or colleges. Why this is happening in this country? What is lacking here? You know what is lacking? Love. Those men who are involved in those acts lack love. If you go and analyze their life and see what, is, what has gone wrong with them, it is love. They never had a loving father or a loving mother. They never experienced love. At home, there was violence. Their homes were rocked by violence, by roughness. No love at all. When you live at a home where there is no love at all experienced, then this is the outcome. You may produce a madman who may become a threat to the entire society in any minute. Love. This society lacks love. And where love comes from? from family you cannot put it for sale in any in any chain store it's in the family if i cannot find it in the family i cannot find it anywhere else there is no other source that can provide me with love so islam says if a man serves his wife at home with her home chores, Allah will award him with so much reward and vice versa. If a woman serves her husband at home and her children, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward her abundantly. Jihad al-mar'ati husnu taba'ul The jihad for a woman is to be a good wife, a good mother. A jihad for a man, maybe, sometimes, is to go and defend your country, your land. But a woman's jihad is in taking care of her husband and her children. That is her jihad. So, this is a very important goal. This is very important objective to have love and uh, affection. Now, and finally, the fourth objective is to build a family. Children, good children. Not any children, good children. My dear brothers and sisters, Making children is not a difficult task. But building good family and raising good children is a difficult task. It's a choice you make. Every time you see good kids around, keep in mind that there have been so much effort and time has been put. This never happened accidentally. Never happens accidentally to have good kids. Trust me, anytime you see a good kid, keep in mind that his or her parent has put so much time, care, and effort behind that. It takes a lot of time to do that. Now, how do I do that? How do I establish a good family? The first thing, my dear brothers and sisters, is a good selection. If I'm about to get married, I need to be careful who to marry. I need to be very careful. I shouldn't be fooled by false considerations such as physical beauty, wealth, fame. None of that would matter. I need to focus on the inner beauty. If I'm seeking to marry a wife, I should not be fooled by physical appearance. The Prophet says, Iyakum wa khadra uddiman. Beware. The Prophet says, Beware of the greenery on the dumpster. Greenery on the dumpster. What's that? Greenery on the dumpster. 
He says, Al Maratul Hasna fi Mambatisu. A beautiful woman, but from a very bad and corrupt family. Beware. Don't be fooled by the look only. Look is taking now taking you nowhere, my dear brothers and sisters. Trust me. Always focus on the inner beauty because the physical beauty is temporary. Temporary. It will vanish one day. But the inner beauty will never last. By the way, these days there is no beauty at all, unfortunately, in most cases. It's mostly fake beauty. They go and make surgeries, one after another, 50 surgeries, so she can look nice. I mean, tell me. I'm not saying there is no beauty at all. But most of the beauty you see in the TV, in the reality TV, and on Facebook, on our newspapers, it's mostly is fake, fake beauty. <laughs> you know, they go and spend now thousands of dollars on on surgical operations so she can look better. Thousand dollars on, you know, lifting up the face and making the nose smaller or look better or other parts of the body. You know, they say uh, a lady got in car accident and as the angel of death came to take her soul, she started appealing to him and pleaded with him that, please, I have, I have kids. I have five kids. If I die, they will be orphaned. And the angel of death told her, fine, I will give you another 20 years for your kids. So she was saved, alhamdulillah, and she did not die in that car accident. What did she do? She went and she did 15 surgeries, plastic surgeries, liposuctions. Uh, uh, you help me with those names. I'm not an expert. <laughs> so now she looks completely different. Two months later, she got in another car accident. And the angel of death came and took her soul. And she says, hey, 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 you told me I have 20 years. He looked at her and he says, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't recognize you. Was that you? <laughs> She's completely different now. So, be selective. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by physical appearance, by money, wealth. Unfortunately, some families, the first question they ask about the man when he approaches them, how much he has? How much he has? What does he do? How much he make every year? What is going to help my daughter if my son-in-law makes a million dollars, but he beats her every day, every night? If he mistreats her, if he goes and drinks and comes back home drunk every night, what is, how is she going to benefit from this relationship? Focus on akhlaq. Focus on religion. The Prophet says, seek two criteria only. And a man asking for your daughter's hand. Two criteria only. If you're okay with his deen, his religion, he prays, he fasts, and he has a good akhlaq. He's not stingy, he's not frugal, he's not selfish, he's not arrogant. If you find those criteria in him, Close your eyes and tell him yes. Don't worry about money. Money goes and comes. Don't worry about owning an apartment or piece of land. Those are temporary possessions. 
He may not have them today. Tomorrow he may have them. Those are not essentials. What is essential is akhlaq. Akhlaq and deen. Those two qualities you need to seek. Akhlaq and deen. And anything beyond than that, how much money he has, how many apartments he owns, how much inheritance he got from his father, that's all irrelevant, my dear brothers and sisters. Trust me. Trust me. Don't be fooled by any other consideration other than religion and akhlaq. And finally, as a father, as a mother, watch out for your own personal conduct. Meaning, if you want to raise good kids, kids who do not lie, you're not supposed to lie. If you want your kids to come out clean and not cheat, you should not cheat. Kids look at you. My kids look at me. All kids look at their parents. If I am someone who commits all kind of a fraud, it will be a wishful thinking to think my son will be Jesus alayhi salam. This is a wishful thinking. I need to be a good person. I need to be a clean person. I need to be a role model for my children. Before submitting my children into any school or any teacher, I need to watch out my own behavior, my own personal conduct. Because kids are, my kids are observing. You know, kids, subhanAllah, humans, humans have two contradictory innates in them. One is they mimic, and two, they invent. Human beings mimic. Your kids, how did they learn your language? From you. They mimic you. They mimic you. They look at you, how you speak how you pronounce a word, then they, they do. They do the same. That's how our kids learn the language. Because they are emulating the parents. And at the same time, when they grow up, or even when they are young, God has given them the ability to invent, to invent, to expand. They use their brain. And here there are inventions, discoveries, scientific discoveries. Children at this age, when they are small, they act with all due respect like a monkey. They just mimic whatever the father, the mother says or does, they mimic. They follow, they emulate. You need to watch what you say before them, what you do before them. When you want to fight with your wife, don't fight before your kids. Don't fight before your kids. Watch out for the words that come out of your word. Kids will learn a profanity not from TV, not from university. The first person they learn profanity from are their parents. Make sure that they do not hear any profanity. Make sure that the environment at home is encouraging for those parents who always ask, how do I make my children pray? Very simple. Trust me. Very, very simple. You know how? You pray at home. If you pray at home, they will learn. If you wake up in the morning for the morning prayer, they will wake up. But if you don't wake up for the morning prayer, what does make them wake up for the morning prayer? When you stand up every day on your sajada, on your salliya, and you pray, they will watch you, and they will learn from you. They will learn from you. You are leading by example. You don't need to tell them, pray, pray, pray. Just to pray at home while they are young, and they will learn from you. Habitually, they will learn that. You will not have difficulty. How to teach my daughter to wear hijab? You wear hijab. 
and she will learn from you. How to teach my son to fast? If I fast every year, he will learn from me. She will learn from me. The best way to teach your kids good values is by practicing those values. Allahumma khfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujib al da'awat innaka qadi al hajat innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir wa ila arwah al mu'mineen wal mu'minat naqra' al surah al mubarakah al fatiha السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته not today إن شاء الله next week some people one second please some of our friends are suggesting that we leave 10-15 minutes in the end for a Q&A how many of you support this idea raise your hand please how many of you Okay, so inshallah next week we will dedicate last 10 15 minutes for a QA, inshallah. If you have a question, please write them on a piece of paper. Please write them on a piece of paper and in a, a, a writing that I can read and send them to me, and inshallah I will answer them. 